way to Brescia. Tell them why you want. Because we are making an Alentejo food tour. We're standing on Castello, Brescia, a beautiful, well-maintained castle from uh, 1310. Like I'm in a scene from Braveheart. So we have a bunch of uh, restaurants lined up for today. Thanks to you guys because you actually uh, told us exactly what to, what to eat. And there was a big agreement between hundreds of you guys actually what we should have here. So uh, we're gonna start now this restaurant. This is known to be the best restaurant in Beja. Come on. wonderful small restaurants we have been to in Alentejo so far. It's so cute and so authentic and of course we're also having the most authentic dish that you guys mentioned. We are having the migash. The migash is like a bread dish where you toast the bread in the oven with alvo and olive oil. It looks like an omelette but it's not an omelette. And here at this uh, restaurant they make the traditional version and then they also make a version with asparagus. It's gonna be a good day. So you can't talk about authentic Alentejo food without talking about the Alentejo bread. We have had it before and it turns out it varies quite a lot. Some of the breads are very heavy and some other are like this one, which are my favorite version of them, where they are a bit spongy. Our waiter just told us that this bread was invented with the influence of two very different cultures. The Roman Empire and the Arabs that actually brought the techniques and uh, the way of making this bread to Portugal. So the table has been filled with pleasure and happiness. This is one of them, the yin and yang migas. We got the traditional one and then we have the um, twisty one. Mm. Wow, it feels like you're eating an omelette, but the flavors are really good. It's like slightly burnt, it's salty. And it actually reminds me of a, a kind of aliera. It has the same texture and the taste is similar to aliera. The twisted seems like it's almost the same, except the asparagus, but let's see if the taste is different. To me it's the same. No, it's more or less the same, but you have like the flavor and even more important the texture of the of the asparagus. This one is more interesting to me. Mm. This is the black Iberian pork that you find here in Alentejo, but I actually just heard that Portugal they do export a lot of their pigs to Spain because it's a better quality than the Spanish one. So they serve it with this apple sauce that is supposed to make it like a sweet, salty experience. You get three different cuts of the pig, which makes it much more interesting because generally when you go on a steak restaurant, you always get one piece of, of meat and then it's just repetitive. I am in love with this. Uh, I would give it an eight and a half. This is also black pork, but uh, just the ribs. It's like little snacks. How do you like it? It's amazing how something so simple can be so great. This is some of the best ribs I've ever had. So simple, so delicious. I think that's what Alentejo food is all about. The migas is so simple. The homemade potato chips. Oh, e o nome disso é Naku. Naku? É no vídeo. E é de pote maturado. Oh. E é muito típico de Alentejo. Sim. Something I love even more than the food here is that when you order a glass of white wine, you get a garrafa meia. This is a peanut mousse. This is something I've never had before, but we're gonna start with this one. It looks delicious. It has this very typical Portuguese texture. It has almond sugar, and I think it also has um, laranja. But I love the texture of it. It's a cake, but it also is quite like a mousse. Before we moved to Portugal, I never had a sweet tooth ever, but after moving here, 
I've grown to appreciate desserts, which is why I'm over 90 kilos now. Speaking of kilos, let's add more to the sides. Like, I hate peanut butter so much, so I'm kind of interested in, in this. Like, peanut butter is so dry, it's like eating sand. Oh my god, this, this is, I, it reminds me of something. What is it? It reminds me of... Sneakers? Mm. It's sneakers. Oh my god. Mm. Look at the texture, honestly, look. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I think this is the fullest I've been after first meal on a food tour ever. The food in there is amazing, the staff is amazing, and you really get the feeling of being in Alentejo while you're in there. It can only go downhill from now because we started out at the best restaurant in in, in Persia. I think we're gonna go back to our hotel. Because we're staying at a very special hotel. Look at that! <laughs> it's a fountain. It's that is the coolest thing I have ever seen in terms of fountains. I want one of those puppies. Very cool, Beja. What do you think about the room here? I, lo I actually love the hotel in general and it's so pretty like all the rooms have these high ceilings that you would you normally see in a church and it's interesting to sleep in a place where the monks used to sleep I mean come on I wonder how many people live here We can look it up this many So we're here at Adega Din Cinque April but this is our second stop of this vlog Tomorrow we're doing the third one. taking your recommendations very literal, literal. So we are having a Swata Bacalao and it's a soup made with bacalao, codfish, and then it's super breaded, it's like pieces of bread, super alentejo style. They want to soak bread in any, everything. Then you have a soft boiled or like a poached egg and you have coriander and you have this local herb that is called pocho. Pocho. Pocho? Pocho. Pocho. I'm excited for this because you can really smell the coriander. It's mm. cut it out. Cut it out. Oh my god, it looks so good. Yeah, and you can really smell the alio. Mm. So the presentation is um, a lot more different than what I uh, expected. You know, every time I hear cutfish, you know, I'm 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 used to one big silver um, tray. Tray, not here, and um, I'm a bit nervous because. Um, I definitely um, like it. The fish taste is not fishy. I think what I like the most about this is actually the bread that is just completely absorbed with all the juices. I'm never going to be a big fan of bacalhau. It's how I'm born, how I'm made. Are you a fan? Yeah. I think so far for me this is the best way of presenting the cutfish. Because you do get all the, the flavors from the cutfish, but then you also get the herbal fla flavors. The garlic is quite pungent in this one. This is one of the better bacalao dishes I've had. So this hot soup is soba de cazao, and this is a duckfish soup. We have never had it presented this way before, and I gotta tell you the smell of this is beautiful. It actually reminds me a bit of the former one, but this one is more creamy and has much more of a creamy, like, fat texture when you look at it. It does smell a lot of vinegar. 
but in a good way. Oh my god. So when it's so thick, it's like it glazes your mouth more, so you actually feel the flavors much more in your tongue. So far, this is my favorite. Oh, today? Really? I think this is even better than Migas. This is really, really good. You know what? I have this thing, this aversion to soup in general. It's like, it's for babies. Soup, it's for babies. I mean, I think it's really good, but it's not amazing. The third and the last uh, course of today is um, sopa de tomate and uh, tomato soup. And I know Amelie, she's been looking forward to this because she loves tomato soup. There's actually bacalhau in, in um, the tomato soup here, which they say is normal for the tomato soup. I, I was actually looking forward to a tomato soup, pure and simple, but um, I'm gonna maintain an open mind. Besides the bacalhau, I love it. The bread that is just soaked in tomato, I really love that. So I love tomato soup and I quite often order it, but that also means that I am super critical when it comes to the taste. And I gotta say that this does not look like any tomato soup I've ever had. Mm. Do you know what? Since the flavors of the soup are so pungent and so strong, it actually makes the flavors of the codfish appear less, so it kind of blends in, and that makes it a very interesting dish. I actually like the saltiness that the codfish add to the to the rest of the dish. My favorite soup is beer and uh, this one is actually uh, from a brewery here in Beja. It's called Alborad. We gotta support the local breweries. I support all breweries every day. <laughs> it's like a like a like a, a, a urine sample where you should definitely go to the doctor. It's really good. As if we haven't had enough sweets for today, we're just gonna have one more. And uh, interestingly enough, what we're having is Sirakaya, which is uh, one of the uh, desserts that was uh, highly recommended from you guys. And it's basically just a puffy edition of creme leche, sugar and eggs, as always, in any dessert in Portugal. And then you have canela and um, a little um, plum. Oh my goodness. One thing I, I love about the, the desserts we've had today is the texture. A heavy, juicy dough or cake is my favorite cake. This fits the bill. The restaurant here is a family business that they got in 1980. Today it's run by the son and his mother and the mother is the, the lady in the kitchen who decides what is good enough to go on the table or not. Foi um prazer comer aqui. Obrigado. 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 Alcacer do Sal is where we are and uh, this is actually a town we've been driven past a number of times but we never actually went inside of it. It's our last uh, stop of the Alentejo food tour. Maybe. <laughs> Look at me, okay. I have to wear a tracksuit because I can't fit any of my other clothes. What's the name of the restaurant? Cabana dois uh it's Quina? It's I think it's like the second corner, the Tabana, the second corner. Yeah. It's not a commercial, but this is a Coke Zero with canela. You are a disgrace to the food vlog. Christmas really. came early, let me try. Oh my god, this is fun. It's like you just had a pistel di natta and then you wash it down with a Coke Zero. <laughs> I think something that is mutual for all the places we've been here in La rest the restaurants, is that they're so cozy. But I think it's also because 
people here are much more passionate about what they do. It's not just a money machine for for the families who own all these restaurants. Like the last restaurant we went to yesterday, they were so friendly and they really loved what they did. I really have come to love Alentejo. What we are having here is savage pork or wild boar and it's very traditional to have here in Alentejo. This particular dish is called Chiavali. Chiavali de Eskabesh. Eskabesh. Chiavali? Eskabesh. And it has been slow cooked and then afterwards they have made this broth or like this fong out of the onions and then they have put that on top and that's just for us to enjoy it. It's so tender guys, honestly, it falls apart. Are you happy? The meat itself is slightly dry, it doesn't have much fat, but then you have this like sweet, bitter, fatty um, mollo or soup you put mm -hmm. on, on top. It's super dry, the, the meat, and yet it's so greasy. I'm a fan. We are having bochechas, no forno, which is pork cheeks, and it has been cooked for so long that the meat is literally falling apart. Can I? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, if you could feel what I feel in my mouth right now. Is it the highlight of the food tour? It's a 10 out of 10. Oh my god. It's the way it's been uh, marinated that gives it, that makes it special. This is the best uh, we've had on the entire food tour. So we just continue this food tour yeah. for another week. Yeah. <laughs> This was uh, the great Ellen Tesho food tour. Yeah, we tried to manage as many of our subscribers' recommendations, but the number one was actually uh, supposed to be the most popular Ellen Tesciana dish, but yet it wasn't to be found anywhere. Carne de porco alentejano. Anyway, uh, we hope you enjoyed this uh, video, and we will probably make a part two at some point. Obrigada por ver no video. Até luego, guys. Até luego. Ciao, ciao. Un placer. Mas a saudade que me faz